Hello. Today, I want to cover an important topic that I believe has implications for the future of Twitch and new media platforms. And that topic is that Destiny, a controversial broadcaster to say the least, who covers topics around politics and meta issues around Twitch and YouTube, has been permanently banned by Twitch. So I want to talk about in this video why I think that's important that it matters and just kind of cover this sort of topic as a whole. And to do that, I need to introduce myself. My name is Devin Nash. I own a creative digital agency called Novo. And I love doing long form videos about marketing topics, business topics, and topics like this, where I hope to provide a unique t context into these issues because I often have an industry perspective that I can provide. So hopefully this video will be no exception and you'll tune in for it. We're gonna do this video in three parts and that parts are going to be Twitch bands from a brand perspective, so how brands look at, at advertising looks at, at Twitch bands. Twitch bands from a TOS perspective, where we're going to get into the actual rule set of Twitch and why a ban like this happens and some of the kind of uh, context there. And then Twitch's future and why it matters. And we're going to start with the bans from a brand perspective. And to do that, we kind of need to look at an overview of how bans work across different platforms. Because, uh, Sorry, about how advertising works across different platforms, because it's really different on Twitch than it is in other places. So if we look at a, a platform like YouTube, YouTube advertising is by category. This is an oversimplification, but it's all we need to explain this. YouTube advertising means that, let's say that I talk a lot about financial topics. YouTube will flag my channel as an interest in financial topics and the CPM that's applied to me and the advertisements that are shown on my channel will be relevant to financial stuff, right? There'll be stuff like financial apps or things like that. Versus if I'm talking about other issues like apparel or something, right, then I'll get apparel-based advertisements. And YouTube uses an exhaustive system of machine learning to develop an algorithm that um, categorizes every video based on a, a bunch of stuff. But Twitch isn't like that. A lot of people may not realize this, but Twitch's advertising isn't targeted, meaning that all advertisements go into a pool. And if you want to be an advertiser on Twitch, you essentially fall into a pool that then gets shown, your advertisement then gets shown based on your budget out to every broadcaster on Twitch. Now, if you're following me, that means that you as a brand are only as safe as the lowest common denominator on Twitch. <laughs> Meaning that the person that is the most controversial, the people that are the most controversial, see on YouTube, let's say that you have 10,000 YouTubers. Your advertisement just get if you aren't advertiser friendly, YouTube either removes you manually or automatically, either can happen, dictates that you are not advertiser friendly. They just remove your ability to monetize via ads and they, they and ads don't show on your channel uh, or ads in a certain category don't show on your channel. There's different levels. There's, there's green, yellow, and red. So green is everybody can essentially have ads. Yellow is the some categories of ads are restricted and some categories aren't and red is no ads. So if you are really controversial on YouTube, they'll still allow you to exist there, but they'll just put you in the red category and then demonetize you. But Twitch doesn't really have a system like that unless they manually disable your channel for ads, which they don't do that often. Meaning that if you are a brand going to Twitch and you've got a million dollars to spend, you are only as safe as the most dangerous person that your ad is showing, which could be an affiliate that's talking about some crazy, really controversial issue. And because Twitch doesn't run any intelligent machine learning, they can't actually automatically detect this and demonetize anybody. That means that as a brand, you could imagine with that million dollar spend, you might end up in a place where your, your advertisement gets shown up against a very controversial topic. And because nobody has this context in the, in, in the, in the world, when they see that, they just think the brand is associated with that. And you say, oh, this brand is sponsoring that Twitch streamer to say those things, right? Because they don't know the context that I just gave you. So that's an extremely dangerous place for a brand to be. And for whatever reason, even though I've been harping about this or a lot of agencies have been harping about this, they just Twitch hasn't in, in, improved this problem. They, it's a really expensive problem to solve to their credit, probably a multi-billion dollar problem that maybe Amazon just doesn't want to go through because they own Twitch for other means, whatever. But it is a problem on Twitch, meaning that if you believe that Twitch bans people for reasons related to advertising, you can infer from that that Twitch would ban, let's say you have a thousand content creators and you have 10 that are controversial. The utilitarian thing to do would be to ban somebody like Destiny because he is not brand friendly. And you then allow those other content creators to get higher CPMs, more brand opportunities, and, more, and Twitch as a whole makes more money because more brands are comfortable advertising there. So. It is my personal opinion before we go on that that is not the case. 
And that's because the sales department of Twitch, now I'm speaking anecdotally from my personal experience, which is exhaustive with Twitch, but you, and I expect not everyone's going to believe me here. My experience is that the trust and safety division of Twitch makes decisions independent of any other department in Twitch, including partnerships. So they don't even make decisions based off of what account managers or people that are actually running the partners even think. They're making their own complete different decisions, and they're empowered to do so. Trust and Safety has the sole and exclusive ability to ban people on Twitch, and they have no other oversight in that matter except their own people. So we're going to discuss some of the, the highs and lows of that in the next section, but just keep that in mind. The sales division of Twitch doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with bans. I, I doubt those two people, those two departments even know each other. There's a sales division both on the Amazon side, who certainly doesn't know anybody at Twitch, and then there's a sales division on the Twitch side, and there might be some crossover, very minimal. My personal belief is that these, although we, although you hear, you hear Twitch streamers often talking about this, I'm a brand risk, right? Twitch is probably banning me because they want to make more money. This doesn't really work out on the back end in practice. And you, you kind of just have to trust my endemic knowledge of this. I obviously can't show you any kind of like empirical data on this, right? But, but it's just how it works on the back end. So, um, the other thing to consider from a brand perspective is I hear a lot of people saying that. Twitch is target banning certain types of broadcasters because of the type of content that they that, that they carry or the type of thing they do. So we need to understand Twitch as a platform and what its users typically watch. Because I think a lot of the power users of Twitch seem to think that Twitch as a platform is a majority like non-gaming IRL or just chatting type of website. So the sections in Twitch that are like cover just chatting have a lot of very large streamers, but actually don't dominate the type of content that is on Twitch. Let me explain. So this is a Stream Hatchet yearly report, and you'll uh, it's a really reliable data for Twitch, probably the, some of the most reliable data for Twitch. And we'll see here in, in this bullet point here, the Twitch platform has continued to develop massive audiences outside of gaming, all non-gaming categories accounted for 12% of total Twitch watch hours, grew 64% since 2020. So Twitch non-gaming content is growing. But even in 2022, non-gaming content, all of it combined, that includes your politics, your just chatting, everything, is only 12% of the platform. So that means that the majority of the content, right, over 85%, 88% of the content is gaming content. And that's what Twitch is. It's a gaming website. This is one of the reasons why Twitch as a platform has really tried to branch out and be the number one like live streaming platform. But platforms like TikTok Live are already eclipsing its total audience in terms of non-gaming content because people see Twitch as a gaming platform. And I don't, I've done other videos about this, I've done other talks about this. I don't really think that'll change. I, I think that um, Twitch has unsuccessfully been able to move back to like a Justin TV type service where they are representing the, the the global amount of people that want to live stream. And Amazon's also exacerbated that process ironically by offering services like IVS, which is like an AWS service where you can create your own Twitch basically for whatever you want. And so services like that that are built on AWS have come up and dominated some of that audience. But I mean, all of it kind of comes down, I think, in the end today in 2022 to TikTok Live, which just so easily onboarded so many of those uh, those those uh, those non gaming content users. And if you go there now, you'll you'll see hundreds and hundreds of streams of all non gaming content. It's pretty rare to find on there, but they'll have viewership like people that are on Twitch. Okay, so why is that important? Well, that means because Twitch isn't really making decisions based on these non gaming content creators. Destiny as a whole is a very small part of Twitch, and he himself says a lot of the time that it, that um, Twitch probably doesn't even know who he is. I actually think he's probably overly modest in that because uh, a lot of people do know who he is. I mean, he's a real OG when it comes to Twitch, and, and so anybody that's been in the company longer than four or five years that follows the meta will probably know who he is outside of like the engineers who like don't even watch Twitch and just like work on the back end. There's actually a, a good amount of those people, <laughs> but certainly everybody in trust and safety knows who he is and, and the majority of people in, in partnerships. We're talking about a company of three to 5,000 employees. Uh, so it, it, and, and when you're a 1% broadcaster, a top 1%, there's not that many of those people, right? There's, we're talking about maybe 500 broadcasters. It's pretty easy to keep track of. But 
Um, by no means will Twitch make any decisions at a macro level, at an executive level, um, to represent 12% of their platform, right? They're going to be making decisions that are pushing the platform forward to be a more brand friendly overall and a more, um, at a, 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 a more gaming focused website where you can show advertisers and you can do activations, things like big publishers coming in and blanketing the whole website with like Elden Ring sponsorships where you have uh, 50 broadcasters doing it and, and combined with like a Twitch multi million dollar high level platform deal. That's the kind of stuff that Twitch wants to sell. Um, the non gaming section of, of Twitch sell, sells against that because th those are people that tend to be the most controversial broadcasters. And you might, this is why Twitch is like, really not afraid of banning anybody um, out of those categories because um, you'll often see people, very large broadcasters like Dr. Disrespect being banned, now Destiny being banned. Twitch doesn't really care about that because overall as a, as, a, as a gaming platform and the majority of people are playing games. So this sort of like idea that um, Twitch is optimizing for like just chatting or IRL or whatever is wrong. Like that's not, that's not true. There's, this is not the majority of their market. Uh, their market share, right? So from a brand perspective, um, depending on what you believe, there are arguments for or against a band like Destiny's. You could argue that because of the advertising pool, you could say, well, uh, Twitch obviously is going to ban somebody like Destiny because it makes it more safe for advertisers to be there. But from a uh, platform level, you could say, well, Twitch is, just doesn't care because like he represents a very small part of the, the, the total gaming audience. And, you know, most brands are never going to come across it anyway. But I, I mean, and, and like for, as for where I personally sit on it, I, I really just think that this is I'm more providing this context as this first issue because I think it's just interesting that a lot of people think a lot of people put over importance on like the political sector of Twitch, just a, a totally um, a, a total non non sector on twitch I, I mean even if you account hassan who's one of the larger broadcasters on twitch it, it just doesn't make an imprint on the total user base of twitch it's just not a big decision there's no people in the boardroom that are making decisions based on the politics section of twitch nobody cares about that so i just want to kind of put that to bed with these sort of explanations and, and show you some stuff around that before we get on to sort of the terms of service and uh, issues and and what's going on there my personal opinion here for what it's worth i don't think that twitch bans people based on um, them being brand risks for advertisers. So I, I don't think there's a monetary incentive behind Twitch banning people. I, I think that Twitch bans based on uh, their perception of social issues and how those issues are violated and their own subjective, highlight subjective, opinion of what goes on their platform and what doesn't from a social acceptable point of view. And that, by the way, is Twitch's line, right? That's like what they, they say. So I, I don't think there's any like shadow uh, New World Order type stuff happening on the back end where, where Destiny or anybody else was banned because it's more friendly to advertisers for what that's worth. Okay, so um, even though there is certainly an incentive to do that. Okay, so um, Twitch's ban from a, a Section 2 is from a TOS perspective. So we want to understand um, why a ban like this happens and, and, and some of the details of how it happens. So explaining the ban, first of all, Understanding that uh, there are two divisions of Twitch that handle partners or, or, or streamers on Twitch, right? So division number one is partnerships, and division number two is um, trust and safety. Partners, partnerships run people called AMs, which are account managers. If you are lucky enough to be one of the 60,000 partners that has an AM, uh, which is very rare, uh, you have a person that directly represents you and fights for you on the partner level. And these people actually don't make any decisions around enforcement or bans. This is a huge misconception at Twitch that I wish would get cleared up. If Twitch itself never clears this up and doesn't really explain their enforcement, um, except like esoterically in like blog posts and stuff like that. But um, a lot of people say, okay, well, these people like that work at Twitch who are like partner managers, like you see the staff badge in, um, in a person's chat or whatever, these people are the ones that are making decisions on bans. Nope, never the case. The people that are making decisions on bans exclusively uh, for enforcement are trust and safety. Trust and safety is an entirely anonymous, so you will not find a single person that works there, even if you look anywhere, um, an entirely anonymous division of Twitch that decides um, that has sole power over deciding on bans. And oftentimes how it'll work is they will have 
a lead who takes an issue on a case. So there'll be one lead and then there will be some number of people that are reviewing that case. And those people together will make a decision. And usually the majority that uh, comes up with, yes, we should ban, here's for how long or whatever. They'll review the community guidelines uh, and then they will make they will make a decision to ban based on the, um, or not, based on the community guidelines and their perception of it being uh, banned or not. Now, typically this is, um, this is, this is subjective, meaning that there are there are very few objective reason, reasons that a person gets banned. There are some obvious ones, like saying a a like a critical racial slur or something like that, and um, um, just like very obvious things. But mostly these are subjective. And Twitch has been criticized for these subjective bans, uh, and also for their transparency issue, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But trust and safety makes the sole decision. Many people think that um, these decisions happen at an executive level. Now, it is true that for the most high-profile bans, for things like Dr. Disrespect or certain bans that require legal interaction, which is a whole other thing, uh, an executive might get involved. But very rarely does anybody outside the trust and safety team, even for high-profile bans, make a decision. So um, we're looking at Twitch having an entirely anonymous team that bans people subjectively and doesn't tell them why. <laughs> that that's uh, that's what happens. Okay, um, and 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 um, even if an executive did get involved, you would never know because Twitch never reports the reasons for why people get banned. And we're going to get into that sort of thing uh, next, which is we don't actually know why people get banned. Um, and by extension, we don't know why Destiny got banned. So there is hundreds and hundreds of comments right now, as of the time of recording this video, of people that are saying that Destiny uh, got banned for X, Y, and Z reason, or that Destiny knows the reason why he got banned, and he's not telling anybody. Um, nope. It's, it's, it's very likely that Destiny has no idea why he was banned, and that's, that's what he said as much on his subreddit. Um, he posted a picture of uh, the email that Twitch sent him, which reads, um, the reason was hateful conduct which could be one of three possibilities, posting a combination of words and emotes in chat, praising or supporting a hate crime, advocating for the exclusion of a group based on disability. If you look at the community guidelines, hateful conduct is actually one of the sections that Twitch has a zero tolerance policy on, meaning that if they verify the offense, they will actually often ban uh, an indefinite suspension on first offense. Twitch doesn't do permanent bans in the sense that any ban is, is theoretically reversible, but an indefinite suspicion, suspension oftentimes means that you are going to not come back. There are exceptions to this, but oftentimes if an indefinite suspension is issued, it is not reversed. And especially if it involves anything legal, it is never reversed because it has to be overturned by both trust and safety and legal, which um, to my knowledge has never happened before on Twitch. So we don't actually know why he got banned. Um, we, can, we can guess, right? And the purpose of this video is to sort of educate around the systems and talk through this and also like talk about the future. So I'm not going to go stipulate on why he got banned or be one of those people. Um, but I'll also add that Destiny will likely never know why he was banned um, because this is a, a Twitch internal decision. He, um, unless we hear from insiders and somebody on trust and safety or partnerships talks, And that is a possibility with someone like Destiny who would have some connections at Twitch as a result of being there for 11 years. But it's worth noting that a lot of those connections probably left the company over the time that he was there since Twitch has an amazing turnover rate. And the ones that didn't probably distanced themselves from him when he lost partnership because he had an account manager that represented him officially at Twitch. But when he was departed sometime, I think last year, uh, that account manager left. So he no longer has an account manager. So really, he's in the dark. Um, about any reason that he was banned, and, and, and people might think that he knows, but that's, a, that's not saying it. So um, Twitch never reports on why people are banned. Uh, and oftentimes, we rely on streamers to get news on why they're banned. This is a problem because broadcasters, uh, people that do the crime, often have a sort of skewed or perspective of what happened. And if you don't have the other side that's going to argue against it, you get some really weird scenarios. So there have been several times where a streamer has been banned. I've looked at the reason why they've been banned on Twitter. They post it up, and then everybody in the community obviously follows them because nobody watches Devin Nash videos for 30 hours, and uh, each video is 30 hours long, and then looks at it and says, oh, actually, this isn't the way this works. So they, they trust the streamer implicitly, and then the, 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 the Twitch never responds. This has actually happened in some very high-profile cases that I can't talk about, but very, very high-profile cases ha where people don't understand the system. The streamer tells you something, and it is an, a, is a, is an outright, outright lie. It is an outright lie, 
about why they got banned. And they themselves either don't know the reason or they're manufacturing the reason because they know that Twitch does this and they're playing it up for clout. This happens a lot, a lot, both on like one day bans and like whatever. So Destiny is a person who is very transparent, um, like him or hate him. He tells the truth uh, as he sees it. I, I don't think we have any reason to believe, especially since he's literally posted screenshots of his emails that he knows anything that, 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 that we don't know. So um, Twitch not reporting and not being transparent with their bans is both a legal decision because once you ban somebody from your platform and you give them a reason for it we're gonna get into some of the the problems with this before um or, or a little bit later you are beholden to defending that point however you can if you specify the reason for it but also there's a policy implication that twitch believes that if it has to kind of like drag every broadcaster out into the light about why they got banned there's enormous social implications about that and at a platform level, they don't want to take those fights because they want to be like Twitter or Facebook and be bigger than those um, th th than that. You know, you, you look at like a, a very high profile band like Donald Trump, where he was removed from Twitter and removed from Facebook and removed from YouTube, et cetera. But you, they, they, there was no like specific reason given for them. And, and there's very rarely any specific statement made from the platform itself even on a, a removing a presidential con um, candidate. The reason for this is because if the platform starts to give that kind of air to individual broadcasters, all of a sudden Twitch doesn't look like this overarching platform that is just provides a platform for content creators to exist. It looks like it's getting very involved in, in, in the weeds and the nuts and bolts of things. And that's not a good look for like Twitch from an, like an overall company perspective. So they don't do it. They're, they're, I, I don't think they're ever likely to start doing um transparency on bands they can get a little bit more transparent so they can kind of like point you towards and actually this believe it or not the email that destiny sent is more transparent than a lot of uh emails that have been um come before and and will even bullet point to the community guidelines before you wouldn't even get that and uh, famously, Amaranth was banned and had no clue why. Um, and, and I can say that because we represent Amaranth at Novo, and we inquired internally to the, um, to the reason why she was banned, and we have no idea why she was banned, and she has no idea why she was banned on her last ban. So, um, and, and she says as much here, um, somewhere. Oh, uh, I'm trying to see why I even got banned on Twitch. I'm confused. So oftentimes streamers actually have no idea why they were banned and Twitch uh, doesn't even give uh, people that are, we we're, 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 uh, represent Twitch on several different brand deals. We pass millions of dollars through Twitch and we have no insight into that stuff any more than um, broadcasters or the public does. So they, they play that stuff pretty close to the, to, to the chest. Okay, so let's talk about why this all matters. So, so we've, we've kind of given some context on how Twitch bans people from a TOS perspective. We've talked about how trust and safety enforces it and some of the way that they look at it. We've also talked about how branded advertising works on Twitch. And now I want to put that all together and talk about Twitch's future and why this matters. And we're going to get into some of the more personal stuff here. So before we begin this, if you're still watching this video, we are now... 22 minutes in, that's pretty good for a Devin Nash video, right? And this is the secret call to action. If you are here, leave a comment and tell me you got this far at the 22 minute mark. I always appreciate looking through the comments and seeing people that watch this far, and I really appreciate you. So just a quick shout out for you all. Thank you very much for being here. And hey, if you want, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash Devin Nash. You by no means need to do this, but for five bucks a month, you can toss a subscription there and you will get all kinds of videos about business marketing and how to build businesses that I make about twice a week or once or twice a week um, for five bucks. There's already like 40 videos on there. It's a pretty good deal. Go check it out. Otherwise, just thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Let's go. Twitch's future and why I think it matters. Futures here. Okay. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is not knowing why you're banned. Just because it kind of connects to the, um, to, to, to the, uh, the previous topic of uh, Twitch not reporting on people why they're banned. So as a content creator, you make a decision, your biggest decision you make is what platform you're on. I think we can all agree to that. And further, we can agree that Twitch as a platform is the only platform that at an affiliate and partner level demands total exclusivity of live content. This is really, really important. And I want you to think about this a lot as we go on and explain this. So. Twitch 
if once you sign an affiliate contract, and I have in a video about why you should never become an affiliate on Twitch. And if you're an affiliate on Twitch or thinking about becoming one, you should watch Why You Should Never Become an Affiliate on Twitch by Devin Nash. It's a really good video and it's super important where I bullet point how crazy it is to give up exclusivity in exchange for affiliate, which is attainable by anybody. Um, it, it's difficult to believe that anybody puts any value on being an affiliate because it's literally, uh, you just set up a bot and then call your mom and then call your, your, call your dog and that's enough viewers to get affiliate consistently if they all stay there and watch. So affiliate programs bind you contractually to exclusivity where you cannot post any live content at the same time as you're broadcasting on Twitch. And at a partner level, this is certainly true. Meaning that uh, if you do any live streaming, you can't go do it anywhere else. Now, this is the biggest shakedown on the, in the world of content creation that Twitch has, ha, has this happen and that people allow this to happen. Because multi-streaming, full stop, is the best way to grow a broadcast and to diversify as a creator um, and to uh, be successful overall. And that is something that Destiny lived since he was departnered. He multi-streamed on YouTube and ma maintained, I think, a higher viewership. I'd have to talk to him about this or ask him. But I'm pretty sure he would confirm that he had higher viewership on YouTube as well as greater discovery. And if we went back to the numbers, we'd probably find that. Because uh, as, as you, if you've ever watched a Devin Nash video, you know that being discovered on Twitch is unlikely and difficult. You are one of hundreds and sometimes thousands of broadcasters in a category. How are you going to find the 419th Fortnite stream with two viewers on Twitch? You're never going to find that on platform. So the only way that you can advertise and you can market is off platform. Now on services like TikTok Live or YouTube or pretty much even Facebook or any other streaming service, that's not true. Discovery can come from in-platform, can also come from things like Instagram and everything else. But Twitch limits you exclusively to streaming on the platform be, uh, at an affiliate or partner level, and then you can't get discovered. So as a content creator, your biggest decision is, to, is what platform you're going to be on. And if you decide that you're going to be on Twitch, it becomes very scary for a content creator to at any time be banned by Twitch and not know why and not know when that is going to happen. So here at Nova, we represent a lot of tier one influencers and I've talked to a lot of tier one influencers and many of them, even the people that are kind of above water, much less the controversial ones, live in constant fear of not knowing when that ban on Twitch is going to be their last and it, that has enormous implications because Twitch also has a co-policy we'll talk about in a minute, where if you are banned on Twitch, nobody that is on Twitch can show anything from you. And we just had uh, a, a prominent Twitch streamer get banned for doing that. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this is kind of crazy. And there is a, a, a shout out to a dude named Dan, who's a member of the Destiny community. I'm um, just going to make sure I don't have my DMs open here. Okay, we're good. If Uber told its drivers they also can't drive for they also can't drive for Lyft, the uproar would be biblical. But Twitch gets away with doing just that, forcing streamers to become completely reliant on their platform. Something has to change. Either streamers are independent contractors or they're not. So this is a great tweet um, from Dan Can't Stream <laughs> because it's true. It, it, it's 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 basically that Twitch is holding people to exclusivity and saying, "Hey, you've got to stream here, but we're not going to tell you." Uh, we're, 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 not, we're not going to actually give you any benefits of that. You're not an employee of ours. We're not, going to, we're not going to guarantee anything. And oh, by the way, we can completely ban you at any given time and not tell you why. So um, here we go. We're going to start getting into the real stuff here, okay? Whatever you think of Destiny, and I realize there are a lot of people who do not like him. I'm going to put myself out on the line and say that Destiny is one of the people, before I, just so you understand my biases and everything, Destiny is one of the people who helped me become who I am today. When I returned back to Twitch um, in 2018, uh, I was a very small broadcaster again, and I talked to Destiny a lot, and, and like many dozens of people, he elevated my broadcast and got me a lot of viewers. Um, now, I'm going to go even a step farther and say that Destiny actually, for a very long time, I think we kind of just fell out of contact, not because of anything bad, but just because that happens, um, just both got busy, uh, helped me a lot and actually pulled me through some pretty tough times. I even spent some time at his house. And so I have a bias towards uh, Steven, I, and, and I think that he's a good dude. And, and that's just where I'm at. I think that he, uh, so you understand my biases and understand like where I'm going with this. Uh, and as I talk about this, I understand you might disagree with that. So whatever, whatever your opinion of Destiny is, 
um, I want you to really think about Twitch's ability as a platform to do this. And when I, I told people this, I tweeted this when Amaranth got banned, because when Amaranth got banned, everybody was cheering for it. There are so many people that think that Amaranth um, doesn't work hard or does overly sexual content, doesn't deserve to be on the platform, whatever have you. I, I fought against this so much. I've said Amaranth is one of the hardest working people on Twitch. And, and, and I mean, just puts in the hours like no other. Plus is an incredible entrepreneur. Despite that, her ban was championed. And I said, you just wait. Because if Twitch can ban anybody for any reason they want, and they don't tell you why, and they don't tell the broadcaster why, you will cheer that on until they come for your favorite broadcaster. And lo and behold, they've come for Destiny, and now there's another community of people that is ostracized that doesn't understand why this happened and is outraged because they just, they just don't have answers, right? They just, they just don't have answers, and there's no path to redemption. And um, one of the things that Twitch often says is they talk about intent. So intent in banning a person, um, sorry, they, intent in a broadcaster, what, what, I, what they mean, what I mean is um, if you are intentionally harmful or malicious in the way that you approach things uh, without recourse, Twitch says they evaluate that in their, um, in, in their evaluations for bans. So Twitch... Uh, to my knowledge, for many tier one influencers who, who have dealt with this situation, including Destiny, has never really had a practice of reaching out to broadcasters for any kind of redemption. They don't say, hey, here, we've noticed this kind of behavior, and, 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 and here's how we think you could improve this. And once you are the subject of an indefinite suspension, your literal recourse is talking to like help at twitch.tv and trying to get some uh, person who gets uh, some, some person to create a case ID that maybe will be overlooked by some low level manager if you're lucky um, to begin whatever that is. And that's why you see so few people with an indefinite suspension ever come back. They have no like really recourse. But like Destiny was a broadcaster on Twitch for 11 years. He was one of the original OGs in the esports and StarCraft community. He built the platform with, along with several of the other original broadcasters and love him or hate him, you can't deny that his impact on Twitch has been massive. And now, as a macrocosm, looking back at the, like, the total statistics, sure, he represents a small part of the Twitch community, but does that take away from the legacy of what he created? And does that mean that Twitch can just throw away any of its partners, regardless of how long they've broadcasted there or what they've contributed to the platform? That is the the reality of the of the of the company that it, there is now. And you, as a content creator, have to really think about that, because if you're going to make the biggest decision of your life to be on a platform exclusive way where you put your brand on the line and you put everything on the line, and Twitch can just toss you away because they don't care and they have no commitment to their broadcasters and they expect you to commit completely. I don't know why anybody would accept an affiliate or partner contract at this time on Twitch. I would recommend 100% you multi-stream, you gain all the benefits of being on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, you use a chat to, uh, that merges all the chats, and you talk to everybody, and you, you run your platform multiple different places. This is kryptonite, for some reason, to broadcasters who p pass along to me bullshit, unsubstantiated stuff like, oh, well, multi-streaming distills your community and makes it so there's not enough people, uh, people that are on Twitch are going to feel like uh, you're answering people and you say, this is, there's like, there's no evidence of this. Like, it's totally the opposite. All the stuff that we have on multi-streaming shows over and over again, that is just, it, it, it's, it's a completely beneficial thing to do. There's literally no downside. So as a, as a broadcaster, are you sure you want to dedicate yourself to a platform that doesn't care about you, that won't ever tell you the reasons that you are banned, and will change its rules on the fly, that, and you're going to be exclusive to these people, and then provide you no benefits, no employee interaction or anything? So um, the other issue I kind of have is evaluating content creators on individual action, which is like, I don't know, 15 to 30 second clips versus total body of work. So if you look at a lot of the kind of high profile bands and you point back to what we think those bands were about, oftentimes a content creator can lose a career, in this case, lose a career of tens of thousands of hours of live content broadcasted over a single misstep. And I'll quote DC Comics, the Joker here and say, 
Everyone is one. Everyone is only one worst day away from becoming me. <laughs> right. So you're only another good quote is you're only as good as your last at that. And obviously, if you say something incredibly egregious, it's difficult to come back from. But um, and I'm, I guess I'm just sort of speaking to the Twitch community and, and the, the, the online community as a whole when I say this, that um, it is so unfortunate that we rarely, if ever, evaluate people on the total body of their work. And instead, we take these instances where they say something live, which in real time is difficult because you can't do a VOD like this and edit it, even though I'm just ad hoc, man. I just go. I'm, this is basically me just talking without edits, and I just upload this thing. But I have experience doing that, I guess, but whatever. Uh, and I can be careful of what I say. Even I still make mistakes. I'm evaluated on my 15, 30-second clips or whatever. Evaluating somebody on that and not the basis of their, uh, of their whole work is um, kind of unfair, both from an enforcement perspective and from a, uh, a social one. And, and I think it's something we tend to do that I have a problem with um, and I'm kind of worried about uh, for, the, for the future of Twitch. That, that again, if you're going to build a, a brand, on a platform and not diversify, um, you know, you're only as good as your last at bat. And if you say something that Twitch doesn't like, which by the way is a moving goalpost, right? Um, the things that you say on Twitch today were things that broadcasters regularly went back and forth on in 2015, even. Uh, and, and I remember um, some of the, the back and forth in esports in like the 2012, like post Justin TV era was crazy. Right. Um, I mean, very frequently people were f bombing on stream or like saying like crazy stuff, and that was all fine. Right. Like um, that was just sort of the the modus operandi, and th those goalposts have moved, but a lot of it appropriately, um, but continue to move. And as society, um, I think, kind of pushes itself towards being more um, gentle, I'll, I'll put that word there. We risk running into a situation where all of a sudden the things that you have said or are saying are not okay. And if you don't adapt with the, the, the times, then all of a sudden you are the, 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 um, you're the bad egg. Uh, and, and, and that has a lot of implications as a content creator building a platform and building an entire career. So I'm worried about that. And then I think the thing that I'm maybe the most worried about is this whole um, exclusivity and growing bands list. So Twitch is the only platform that enforces a policy that if you've been banned from this platform, you can't in any way integrate that, pers uh, that banned person into the platform anymore. So Destiny, now being banned from Twitch, is going to uh, never appear on another Twitch stream at, or, or, or he'll get banned. Um, this actually just happened with uh, GM Hikaru. I think I thought I had this article open. I guess I don't. Uh, let's see, GM Hikaru ban. GM Hikaru ban. What's going on here? So GM Hikaru was recently banned from Twitch uh, after showing a, uh, a Dr. Disrespect's Twitch uh, clip because Dr. Disrespect is banned on Twitch. So he showed a clip from Dr. Disrespect's YouTube and got banned. This is a tier one influencer getting banned for this. So as long as this policy exists, it means that now Destiny is a, a basically deplatformed from Twitch, right? As nobody can cover him because at, at, at fear of being banned if they get caught. And I think as more people get banned from the platform, this also has implications in the future for uh, Twitch negatively. And again, that exclusivity means, well, I'm streaming on Twitch. It's the only place I can be. I can't multi-stream, so I can't show all these other broadcasters. And uh, if you are a pillar of a community, so like Destiny being a pillar of like the political debate community, now means that like a lot of panels and smaller broadcasters who were uplifted through him will no longer be able to do so because they can't interact with him. They, they, they just, he went to YouTube. Um, and he'll stay on YouTube, and now he's just over there, and um, you know they'll have to stop their Twitch streams to um, to, to to go over there and, and and not stream at the same time if they if they want to, which really sucks because they can't build their brands on Twitch where they're living. So if I wanted to summarize that whole issue and, and sort of the Twitch's future, the thing that I'm really worried about and 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 uh, is the exclusivity thing. The exclusivity for affiliates and partners at this point is just such an archaic and, and, and frankly, just kind of like a mob shakedown mentality where they're, they're obviously doing this for the business reason of not allowing other platforms to compete. And it's not something that Facebook does, not something that YouTube does. And that's because Twitch, all they have is their live streamers, right? Facebook and YouTube have multi-billion dollar ad platforms. They have very successful businesses built on the foundation of a social media network. Twitch has never been able to duplicate that process. They hold streamers hostage, for lack of a better word, because they under exclusivity, because that is all they have. 
if a broadcaster like XQC or a broadcaster like Hassan Abi or a tier one broadcaster of that kind of viewership starts broadcasting on a platform like YouTube or broadcasting like a platform uh, like a platform like Facebook, then Twitch loses a competitive advantage as soon as the technology of those platforms gets better, which arguably on platforms like YouTube where you can do VOD playbacks and you can do higher quality stuff, um, it's just easier to broadcast. A lot of that technology is already better. And that is one of the reasons why right now events, um, pound for pound, events that happen and are co-streamed both on Twitch and YouTube have higher YouTube viewership, uh, particularly in esports, than they typically do on Twitch because the viewing options are better. So Twitch doesn't want to compete on that level, so they hold people to exclusivity and will continue to do so. I see absolutely no world where, you, where Twitch uh, removes this policy. Um, these are just kind of some of the things that I'm worried about. Overall, though, um, I'm also just kind of worried about the... And I'll just say a little bit about this um, before we sign off here because it's, it's very controversial. The... Oh, man. Okay, so there has been... A lot of talk about cancel stuff, cancel culture. I did a video about this, um, about Colby Carson, his cancellation. Um, I think we need to be, I, I, I wouldn't feel like uh, I did this video justice if I didn't cover this. And I know a lot of people might get mad. You guys might not like me because of this. And you know, I respect you for not liking me. Totally cool. Um, I, I worry that we are moving more and more towards a society that is not okay hearing dissenting opinions. And if you want dissenting opinions to disappear, you have to create a forum where those opinions can appear and they can be discussed under the lens of intellectual analysis and shown to be what they are, which is wrong. And when you're covering topics that are controversial, you have to create that forum. Now, there are going to be people that want to engage as bad actors on those topics, and those people should be removed from those platforms at the subjective opinion of the corporations, right? At the end of the day, all these corporations can do whatever the hell they want. And they're going to, they're going to do things that uh, maybe to some extent on a macro level max their bottom line, but also they're just going to follow the kind of narrative that they want to be in uh, based on their own internal uh, companies' social structures. You look at things like Shopify and their uh, attempted cancellation of Joe Rogan, uh, internal employees I'm talking about, Twitter and a lot of the people that cancel people there, and, and Twitch, which is um, you know, also doing this. And you're going to see that they're kind of towing a certain line and a certain narrative for people that should be canceled. Some of those people deserve to be canceled because they, um, they, they don't approach a topic with the intent of discussing it um, to explore it, the, the rights and wrongs and the details of it. Instead, they, they approach it maliciously or with the intent to harm other people. And when you have that happen, you have to make a difficult decision as a platform to remove those people. And that uh, is often a correct decision. But I worry, um, especially in the world of comedy and in the world of discourse and commentary, that sometimes when the bullets fly and the, uh, and the decisions to ban these people are made, we catch one that is really trying to bring um, a, a, a narrative of truth to a subject. And, and look, uh, in, in Destiny's case, he could have presented a lot of things a lot better. Um, he could have been kinder to people. He could have um, been more charitable to people. This is a person also who was under fire from thousands of people and was expected to maintain a, um, solidarity throughout all of those attacks. Um, Destiny is a person who I think more than any one person on the internet, with the exception of like maybe Amaranth or, or, or some of the top tier female creators, has been subject to just endless public opinion um, to, to the point of, of, of just, I, I mean, just unbelievable, egregious and false claims against him uh, that, that, we, that you, you, you can get into if you want to follow that rabbit hole probably more than almost anybody that I've ever seen. And throughout that is expected to stay stalwart and not attack the other side that's making those claims um, and, and, and be a paragon of um, evidence-based <laughs> um, and, and empirical data to back all of his claims. And, and, and he's been shouted into the void for that for years um, while being expected to maintain this behavior. It's hard, man. Um, and and I, I think a lot of people would have a different opinion if they lived in his moccasins for a few days. Because it's very hard to keep, to, to get that level of hate and like maintain charitability to those people, especially when they're like deliberately tearing you down for, um, for things that are um, unsubstantiated. 
and you know it's all a mix of things because there's like it's, it's a it's a witch's pot of uh, uh both substantiated and unsubstantiated, unsubstantiated claims but the unsubstantiated stuff is really bad and, and, and so he was expected to, to maintain that um and, and and i guess like um one of the things that i i, I like to think about influencers and just my experience of working with them is uh influencers are very much compromised heroes we tend to elevate these people who are you know 30 or or below in age um have varying levels of maturity to a degree that we should trust and believe their opinions on all i mean we we had like during during covid right we had broadcasters that 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 have no business talk, talking about um these subjects you know the tier one broadcasters who just have no experience in virology and, and they're talking about crazy subjects about about this and these are people that are being trusted by by twenty thousand to thirty thousand viewers on these topics um and, and no one is realizing that these are compromised heroes they're people that we elevate to these levels of, of like heroic deeds but have no business being there right um destiny more often than not tried to take the empirical approach to find out what is true and if we're going to ban somebody like that um from a platform we send a message to all other people who are trying to do that, that um, that's not the way that we want to approach things here. Leaving um, other people who make unsubstantiated claims, but uh, from a safer space, to, to, to do so with impunity. Uh, and, and that'll have negative implications going forward on this website and others, mark my words. Whether you agree with Destiny's ban or not, the, uh, uh, that'll happen. Now. I'm not saying that Destiny couldn't have done uh, a lot more work to be more charitable, again, given the context that um, he was doing so under fire at, at a level that I don't think any of, uh, of his detractors really understand. And, and I only empathize with because I've been at the head of a tier one organization in esports, I've been at the head of a tier one agency, and I've seen a lot of PR disasters, and I've had enough Reddit threads about hundreds of comments long about um, whatever I'm doing, <laughs> okay, uh, that I, I've, I've seen a fraction of that. And it has been very hard to process. I could not do what he does. I couldn't do what the top female broadcasters do um, on Twitch. And, and the people that get the most hate um, are also expected to act the best. What a world we live in, right? Where we, we basically champion these compromised heroes, but we're just willing to tear them down at a, uh, at a hair's length when um, they do something we don't like and cancel them permanently and then uh, literally burn them at the stake in the court of, per uh, of um, public opinion. So was Destiny's ban correct? Was Destiny's ban wrong? Um, my bias shows through, but I'm obviously not going to levy that. I want to know what you think. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, let me know what you think around the implications of this. I um, just want to take a look at it as a whole. And I hope that no matter what side of the circle you are on and like what side of the, or, or, or I guess what side of the, uh, of the lines you're on, you think about these issues, um, talk about them, and uh, contribute your voice to them, because I think it uh, how we structure the the future of discourse on websites like Twitch and other websites is extremely important to how our society develops. Okay, so thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you again next time. Appreciate it, and subscribe if you really liked it. Bye.